Hey everyone, uh, it's Gothic Com UA. Uh, we are happy to uh, have a great, great guest, <laughs> great guest today from California. Um, grab some snacks, some drinks, uh, relax and enjoy. And if you have questions, don't be shy to post them here. We'll ask John. Oh, by the way, our special guest is John Siren. Let's wait a bit. This time everything will be fine. I hope. <laughs> Again, finger crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> I hope we start today <laughs> this interview. If you want, you can uh, load. Oh, yeah. Yep. This time it Wait. will be great. <laughs> this time it works. Yay. Hello. <laughs> can you see me? Yeah, <laughs> finally. It's oh, great. okay, cool. Awesome. Oh, I'm just turning, <laughs> turning the volume up a little. Okay. All um, right. <laughs> we uh, heard that uh, you have again a strict uh, quarantine in California. Uh, yeah. Um, they reopened bars and re uh, not bars. They reopened some restaurants briefly with um, the tables had to be really far apart and they had to lower the capacity um and that lasted maybe like three weeks and then our coronavirus cases um skyrocketed so they um cut all of that and but but it's not as strict as when it first um started so now you can get carry out at a rest, say a restaurant, but no clubs, there's no bars, there's nothing like that that's open. So there's no, there's no live music. Um, I think that they're having some sort of show outside of Los Angeles, but it's one of those drive-in shows. I think it might be, um, I just remember reading about it. it. It's one of those bands like Third Eyed Blind or something like that or Three Days Grace, one of those bands that has the number three. <laughs> I don't know if they're popular in Ukraine or not, but they're, they're kind of like a, one of those bands that I think people in, in uh, the U.S. enjoy, you know, but I don't know because I don't even realize. I just know the name, but I think that it's not really my, my style of music to listen to, so. Oh, we'll yeah. talk about style of music a bit later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a little uh, issue with my eye, so... No problem. Mind, yeah, <laughs> I will talk in sunglasses. Hey, you're cool. You're a rock and roller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 10 p.m. <It's laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's like Corey Hart. He wears his sunglasses at night. At night. It's oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have a list of things you are going to do after this quarantine is over absolutely um first thing i would like to exercise in a gym again because i really enjoy doing that um i mean i can i, I like riding my bike and i still do that right now mm -hmm. um but i really like to lift uh weights if i can um so i i need to be at a gym to do that to have the the ability to use all of that and then obviously i i plan on doing shows and performing as much as possible i had a a really booked year that, um plan for this year and uh all of it systematically was canceled and and uh i know they've postponed some stuff for for next year mm -hmm. but um i just even got a notification that some of the stuff that's planned for early next year could get postponed as well. So it's, it's a real drag to get that kind of news. They said they're going to give it another month to 
figure out like where you know if if we've progressed at all mm-hmm. uh, you know if if the rate of the the disease kind of like or not the disease sorry the virus kind of slows down um if that's if that's the case then i'll ha- we'll all have a bit more of an optimistic mm-hmm. outlook on things and hopefully uh yeah we can get right back to business and for me that means uh performing live that's that's really my main my main objective, you know, which every musician is probably saying the same thing, you know, we all want to get out there and, and, you know, connect with the yeah. crowds and, and that kind of thing. So. And yeah. we missed uh, IMAX, so we are waiting uh, for you with this band in Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know that Chris had um, three, I think three or four shows booked in Ukraine. Yeah. And I believe both, are you know both uh tours that he had scheduled mm-hmm. are probably can- i mean certainly the first one was canceled because that was supposed to happen i think in april or may yeah. uh that was his solo acoustic tour and um if i remember correctly he was supposed to maybe go out in august or something like that and do that but i'm pretty sure that's not happening because you know we can't No one's accepting us from the U.S. because the cases of the coronavirus are so high out here at the moment. And um, we've done sort of a poor job at, at, uh, you know, social distancing and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's a lot of social distancing. (laughs) Yeah, social distancing. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, so we're not we're not doing well as a country. Um, But uh, yeah, so. I'm not sure if he'll go back out, to be honest. I have to have a conversation with him. Mm-hmm. The last I heard right now, he's just uh, working on, on making a new record. And then as soon as that's nearing completion, we'll, obvi- we'll obviously uh, look towards doing a tour on that record. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right now, he's just in uh, Pioneer Town, which is this... a uh, really neat little desert town outside of Los Angeles. Uh, he's out there being an artist and creating. <laughs> <That's him. laughs> Maybe he is a booker. <laughs> yeah. um, have you watched any online uh, festivals uh, or concerts uh, during uh, quarantine? To be honest, I haven't. I know that's a big thing right now. Yeah. Um, and... I, I've certainly watched stuff online, but not like a live concert. I mean, I did watch some of Chris's solo acoustic performances uh, from IMX, that is. I, I, I watched some of those, and that's about it as far as um, any sort of thing that's happening right now. I, I mean, I personally will be involved in something that's happening in a couple weeks with a band that I used to write for. called Mankind is Obsolete. Um, we're going to just play three songs live for a festival. It's like a small little music festival that will happen in mid-August. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we haven't really announced it yet because I think that they're solidifying the lineup. Uh, but once once that's all put together, I'll announce that. So that'll be kind of fun. It's always nice to revisit uh, things with that group as well. Uh, what about Gothic Cat? Uh, have you watched what oh, yeah. you were a part of it? That's true. Actually, I, I totally forgot about that. I have seen the Gothic Cat festivals. So, yes, I did watch those. Um, I think I'm thinking the last couple weeks because, yeah, I haven't been watching. I know that there have been some online performances going on, but I did watch that, and that was really good. A lot of my friends were on that ash code i mean they're the ones who who orchestrate the gothic cat festival that band from italy yeah and um do you know them ash yeah. code yeah wonderful people last year um, yeah have they played in ukraine before yeah yeah last year okay cool and are you based in kiev or yep. okay yeah. great city i love kiev so <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love Kiev. I've been to Lviv as well, and I've driven through Ukraine, but I haven't played anywhere else. I would like to go to Odessa. I hear that's a really nice, of course. Uh, nice kind of a, a vacation destination within uh, Ukraine. So, yeah. Great. <laughs> <Right. laughs> 
it's probably much better than Odessa, Texas, which we have an Odessa here in oh, America. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't think that <laughs> it's probably not quite as exciting. But uh, yeah, and uh, you can compare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, when uh, we've been checking uh, and we started with Wikipedia, because it's always uh, the source of um, questions you want to dig deeper. And I saw one interesting fact, and I'm curious if it's true. Uh, it was mentioned there that you played in jazz band with Natasha Cox. Is it true? Yeah, I mean, Natasha and I, um, we, we went to school together. We went to a music school um, when we were a lot younger, when I was in my early 20s. And um, that's how we met. And that's how we started Mankind is Obsolete together. And uh, yeah, we, we used to play in jazz bands at, back at, she was playing piano. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, even when we started that band, she was originally gonna be doing keyboards for that because she hadn't sang in a band and neither did I. And honestly, it was one of those things where we were both trying to figure out who's going to sing and we were trying to find a singer because neither of us were the at the time like wanting to necessarily be singers so uh yeah i, I think uh i think we might have done a coin toss or something like that you know like like all right who's gonna who's gonna try to sing um <laughs> so uh yeah we you know because we couldn't find the right person whatever it is that we were looking for at the time I mean, at the time, we, we, we really liked some of the classic goth bands, Sisters of Mercy and uh, Susie and the Banshees. I mean, the way that we even met each other is we were both wearing the same Sisters of Mercy shirt uh, back in music school, which you don't really see too many people wearing any sort of a goth band T-shirt that go to these music schools. They tend to be people that listen to fusion and progressive rock and jazz and classical music. And that's about it. I mean, when you get into some of these underground styles of music, uh, you, you, you rarely, at least, you know, when I was going to music school, you rarely come across people that would like a band like sisters of mercy. So that was really cool. So we were kindred spirits and we eventually, uh, yeah, started hanging out and writing music together and she started singing for it. Um, and it was great, and the rest is history. We, we did a few records together. Um, I haven't done as much with the band uh, in the past few years. Uh, there's, that's, that's definitely a long story. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly open to writing again and, and rekindling that, uh, uh, that fire, you know, and doing something maybe in the future. But... Uh, because of a lot of reasons I, I've, I've been focused on more of the dr just drumming and I've been helping out a lot of bands with the drumming as opposed to writing songs and, and having my own band. So, sorry, that was very long winded. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you take part uh, as a drummer uh, in a lot of project. Uh, but uh, you say that IMAX is your main job, uh, your main project. Um, what do you like most uh, in uh, work with IMAX? IMAX, yeah, IMAX is a really, really fun project. Um, it doesn't from... a fun project. <laughs> What's, pardon me? No, 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 like you said, it's uh, like a fun uh, project, but... <laughs> More like gothic or... Um... <laughs> no, not... Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 because of the type of music. Yeah, no, I understand yeah. what you're saying. Um, yeah, IMX is, is fantastic, though. I mean, the, so what I'm interested in is, first and foremost, I, I started meeting the fans mm -hmm. of the band, and they are very into it. So whenever you're performing for people that are very excited about the music, that's rewarding in and of itself to make those people happy by being a cog in the wheel and performing for, for others. Uh, second, I saw in the music, there's just so much depth and, and variety of sound within it. I mean, 
Chris writes incredible ballads and then he'll do like very aggressive songs. He'll do songs that you can really, you know, I guess dance to. Uh, he's got, he's got a pretty wide spectrum of emotion uh, within his music. So that right there made it feel like it was never going to be a dull moment performing with that band. I mean, even when, even within the course of a show, we'll do 15 songs and I feel like they're all quite different from one another. And maybe I feel that way too, because I'm now very immersed in it. So, uh, so yeah, IMX is fantastic. I think whatever he'll do in the future will be fantastic as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely saw a future um, mm -hmm. being part of it. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a rewarding experience. And when I, when I joined the group, too, he gave me, you know, like a five-year plan of, of, of work for me to do. So that, that's always been something that's sort of exciting for me because I want to be able to, to continue to be part of something that grows uh, sometimes I'll get hired as a fill-in drummer for a tour. That often happens. Or maybe I'll work with a band that's going to do maybe one or two tours, and then they're not going to do much mm -hmm. in the way of live shows for like two or three years. And so I will not have anything to do with them. So having a group like IMX that's regularly busy is really exciting. So, What about yeah. score? What is your story uh, with them? With Scold. Um, I've known Tim for a very long time. I think I, I don't know, I might have met him when I was out with a band called God Module. I mm -hmm. think he might have come to some shows in LA, uh, possibly Imperative Reaction to when I was playing with them. So he, he had come out and I, and I had met him through mutual friends. And I, you know, at one point he was performing or he was starting a project with Nero Bellum who's in a band called Cyclone 9 who I I was in then I left the band and now I'm back in and so when they started working together on their own project uh, they were talking a lot and I had just done a tour with Cyclone 9 and so Nero was talking to Tim about having me par be part of a tour that happened. I think the first tour I did with Scold, everything is a blur, but I think it was maybe 2018. It wasn't that long ago. It was maybe summer of 2018, I believe. I could be wrong. Maybe it was 2019. I don't know. <laughs> I remember um, that, I be sorry, uh, that you toured together and um, together with Emotionless and White. Uh, yeah was like last year and I remember I wanted to go to Berlin but I did a mis made a mistake I wasn't there and now I'm just <laughs> and and those were the those were the last live shows that we did I mean, I haven't done a live show since that time just because oh. of the whole coronavirus I mean uh that was yeah that was a really good time uh, that that tour was fantastic so yeah I mean but anyway yeah I met I met Tim, you know, I mean, I didn't meet Tim. I started performing with him just based on, you know, Nero recommended me. Tim had already seen me play, but I think Tim wanted to include a few songs that involved a lot of double bass drum. So he wanted to play, I mean, we played a, you know, his more rock oriented stuff, but he wanted to play some stuff that had like, you know, kind of like a lot of double bass drum, heavy metal style drumming. And so because I can do that sort of thing too, it made sense to 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 jump in and, and help out with those tours. And then I've I've been drumming with him ever since. So and then he's also been playing guitar in Cyclone Nine as well. So that's you know, it's we're we're kind of mingling with each other's bands and I mean, you know, when you find people that you're you feel comfortable with work uh it's you, you end up sort of helping each other out on each other's projects. So that's, that's essentially what happened there. Yeah. What about Frontline Assembly? Uh, you also post some uh, playing throughs. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Frontline Assembly. Uh, I've known Bill Lieb, the singer, for... Uh, 
I'm trying to think again, it's, it's been a long time, probably 12 years, something like that, maybe 12, 13 years I've known him. I was on a tour opening up for Frontline Assembly with a band called Dismantled, who I did a lot of touring with. They're, they're a band that's on Metropolis Records where a lot of these industrial and goth bands, a lot of them are on that label. And so what happened was Frontline Assembly about 12 years ago had a tour with uh, D. Krups from uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, for whatever reason, I think they might have had, I don't, I don't know what it was. They might have had like visa issues or something that, t that tends to be the typical Mm -hmm. issue when it comes to international touring or trying to play in the United States. Uh, so last minute they asked Dismantled to jump on the tour. And so I was also, they also had spots for us on their tour bus. So I got to really know the band and, and, uh, and know Bill. And then there was a time maybe in 2016 or 17 when Frontline Assembly needed a drummer to fill in for a tour because the drummer, Jason, uh, he wasn't able to do this U.S. tour that they had planned. So I filled in for them. And so they knew I could play then the music after doing that tour. So uh, they've asked me to, to, to play all the shows that were going to happen now in 2020. But essentially all those shows now are being moved to 2021 and hopefully they are not canceled. But yes, I got I, I, I was uh, contacted by uh, the booking agent saying that we're going to give it a few weeks to see what's happening mm -hmm. with, you know, in the world in general, uh, to see if we can go forth and announce at least the European leg of the tour. I know that we're supposed to go back out with ministry and KMFDM in the US. And that's been rescheduled for April, but I don't know. <laughs> the rate that things are going, it's looking bad. I don't know how it is in, the, in Ukraine right now, but it's not getting, it hasn't really improved, which is uh, unfortunate. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully it does. I don't know. <laughs> it's so frustrating. You cannot say really anything. Uh Mm, okay, do you have any memorable backstage uh, stories? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Wow. Memorable backstage stories. Uh, okay, I, I've got a few. Um, there's, when, when, when I'm with IMX, like, I think the last three or four tours, like, all of a sudden, uh, Chris and Janine really got into doing these online ab abdominal workouts, you know, <laughs> like, you know, kind of like doing sit-ups and things like that. Uh, and so they have, there's this really entertaining, funny guy on YouTube called Jake Dupree. And he has a oh, connection. Oh. No. ab exercise. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Is okay. it good? <laughs> yeah yeah so what happened was there's there was this 10 minute workout um for the abdominal muscles and uh all four of us in the band started doing that on a nightly basis oh. um so like right before we went on stage you know so we so that was kind of comical because i think um some of our stagehands uh videotaped it a few times and there's some funny footage of that I don't know. I mean, possibly that could be in a, an IMX documentary. Who knows? But or maybe it was just released uh, for fun on an Instagram story. But uh, to me, that was pretty hilarious. I don't know. Just seeing all of us doing these silly ab exercises. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, of course, it's not from my experience and from yours, but I saw that video and it just came to my head. Um, when I asked this question, when I thought about this question, and it was you, um, uh, maybe eight years ago, uh, with Imperative Reaction, and okay. there was a guy, uh, Evan Patterson, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 the drummer. He, yeah. was, he was very young at the time. He was like 12 yeah. or 13 or something. Yeah, and um, I remember he started, uh, he had to play only in my mind, and you were helping him, and next to you was standing 
Trevor Friedrich. Uh, and I remember that when this guy started playing, you were like a worried mom, you know, <laughs> over a <laughs> kid. You were just like... That's just my look. And... That's how I look. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I think that, you know, Evan came up a few times. I'm trying to think if that might have been the first time that he had ever done it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, there is that possibility. I think but I was playing guitar on that tour and Trevor was playing the drums. So it was, it was really funny because that whole lineup uh, was, was drummers playing different instruments, except for Trevor was playing, you know, cause I was playing guitar, even though that's not my main in instrument. And I remember Brandon Richter, who's played in a lot of bands. He played in Motionless and White as well. That was one of the bands he played in, uh, but he was playing keyboards you know, which he's a drummer, though. He's like a really fantastic drummer. So it was kind of funny that Imperative Reaction was three drummers, essentially all, you know, doing musical chairs. But but yeah, no, I remember I remember Evan playing. Yeah, I think he's still out there doing it now. I think he's actually touring uh, with a band that I drummed for on one tour called Ludovico Technique. Mm -hmm. So uh they you know they're kind of like they sound sort of like cyclone nine you know like kind of those aggressive black metal vocals but like industrial music so it's kind of like that that sort of a vibe <laughs> yeah but, but uh yeah you were like a worried mom and Trevor Fidu uh, proud dad you know like hmm, that's my boy <laughs> oh wow so I, oh well, that's that's funny i'm the worried what? mom that's great <laughs> oh, really? that's I funny I want to see this video. <laughs> okay, I'll show you after. Yeah, I'll have to check it out myself so I can see. I, I, I recall seeing it maybe when it first came out, but I'll have to revisit it and, and check it out again. <laughs> I rewatched it yesterday, so I remember. <laughs> okay, that's okay. funny. <laughs> uh, we want to talk with you a little bit about your uh, vegan life. <laughs> okay. You wrote uh, an interesting book, uh, The Touring v Vegan. Uh, yeah. uh, how hard is to be uh, vegan uh, when you uh, in tour all the time? Yeah, it comes with its challenges. Uh, I think it's a lot easier now. And I, I'm trying, it, it could be possibly because um, many of the bands that I perform with, often they'll they'll want to eat the same way. So when we're booking a tour and talking to the promoters and they're figuring out what's going to be on the hospitality rider, they'll mention that we're all eating, you know, kind of a vegan style. So, uh, so when, we, when we show up to a venue, there's plenty for us to eat. So that makes things easy right off the bat, but it's not always like that. And it, and it hasn't always been like that. So, uh, I did, you know, I wrote the book, uh, mainly as a, as a guide to help others, especially at the time when, um, uh, veganism was it still wasn't that popular. I know it's really taken off in the last two or three years since I've written the book, but, uh, at the time it was definitely a challenge. And so I wanted to show people how to take matters into your own hands and still eat healthy food and save money because it can be done in such a really, in, you know, inexpensive way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I wanted to use it as a guide for those who are interested so that they wouldn't feel discouraged uh, from doing it and then going out on tour because I've met other people that were maybe vegan when they were at home because it's easy for them to cook and, and, and do things on their own. But then they felt like, Oh, maybe I should just be, maybe I should have, cheese while I'm on tour because it would be easier. Uh, so I, I explain in the book how, how you can do it and how you can maintain, uh, you know, sort of eating in a healthy manner. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, that, that's, that's why I did it. And plus I wanted to talk a little bit about my own story that, you know, maybe doesn't have to do as much with the touring aspect, but just how I came to make this decision and then how I've done it for, you know, a pretty, pretty big chunk of my life at this point so i've been doing it for i don't know is 27 years something like that so yeah so many years <laughs> yeah yeah, I, yeah 
I saw that you started a YouTube channel where you cook and you explain everything and what's so cool that you usually write uh, why it's useful, the nutrition, mm -hmm. um, why, uh, why it's good for your body and so on. That's so useful. <sighs> Oh, thank you. You know what? I should do a lot more of those. I think I got carried away with uh, doing drum videos because you are. I pro pro yeah, yeah, because I'm a drummer and and honestly, like, yeah, I, I I've gotten better, but I'm usually awkward. I feel awkward sometimes when I'm being filmed, which I know that if you're a musician, <laughs> you know, if you're a musician, you should uh, you, you almost have to get past that. And so you know, I'm it, the, the one good thing about being in this quarantine situation is I'm putting myself in front of a camera a lot more. So I'm actually on a personal level uh, growing because of that. You know, I'm I'm not, you know, whereas before, you know, if I was constantly on tour, I didn't have to worry so much about being in front of a camera. And it didn't really bother me if people were filming me performing, but to talk in front of a camera and uh, I, I was always a little bit shy and uncomfortable, but, but I'm getting a lot better, which is, which is good. So I, I want to make, I want to make more of those videos and I want to not, um, be so concerned with, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, that I'm doing. So, yeah, I just caught when I was checking, um, which recipes, uh, I saw even Borsh. <laughs> oh Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a huge deal in in Ukraine, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love I love making borscht, so you'll have to <laughs> tell me your recipe. <laughs> Neil. Uh are there any plans uh to write uh, more books? Maybe not uh, about uh, vegan life. <laughs> Possibly. I really enjoyed writing that book. Um so I think if something moves me enough, like, you know, when I did write that book, I will certainly write again. Um, and I've even thought about making a second edition of that book because there is so much that I've uh, discovered along the way. And then especially after releasing a book, more people have approached me and asked me questions. And so I felt more accountable for being able to give them Ans the answers that they're looking for. And so just that in, in and of itself, I've, I've really, I've grown even since writing the book. So I, I, I'm thinking of possibly doing a second edition, but I've thought about other, you know, other possibilities when it comes to books, because I just enjoy writing and I enjoy discussing my experience with things. And, uh, it's a lot easier for me to collect my thoughts um, when I'm typing them out versus uh, speaking on the fly like I am right now. <laughs> Sometimes I get caught up in my mind and, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I, you know, I feel like I don't explain things as well as maybe I would have liked to. But when you can go back and reread things and edit it um, and then present it, then it's, yeah, I feel like I'm better explaining myself <laughs> yeah are there any guilty pleasure food you have oh yeah definitely um, i'm i'm like anybody else uh you know if the food has tons of sugar or fat or salt in it you know then i'm 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 right there in in enjoying it you know even though i know that including too much of that is probably not the healthiest move. Um, <clears throat> in Los Angeles, we have a lot of sinful vegan restaurants and, and, and places that have like really good donuts and really good vegan ice cream and things like that. So I'm one to partake in that once in a while. Uh, we have a place called Donut Friend in downtown Los Angeles and they make incredible donuts. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're all vegan too. And you could go there and then get like a, uh, chocolate mocha latte that's made, you know, made with like soy milk or something like that. So yeah, you could definitely have some guilty pleasure foods mm -hmm. and still be vegan. And a lot of the stuff's really good. It's not like you're eating moss or something like that. I know that that's a, 
a misconception about the vegan diet, or at least to be, it used to be like that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw from the comments, thank you, Mio Zertz, if I'm uh, spelling <laughs> correct, uh, that remind us that you also work um, as a rescue work. Um, yeah. Any rescue work. Uh, are you still into it? Do you have Yeah. To oh yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, um later on today I I I'm I work for a, a group, I volunteer for a group called Lux Paws, and it's a cat rescue organization here in Los Angeles. Um we're a very small group of people, so we take on as much as we can, but it's still not even enough. There's other rescue groups within Los Angeles. And what I do is, uh, well, the, 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 what the rescue group does is, uh, it's called TNR. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's called Trap, Neuter, and Release. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is, we, there's a lot of feral cats in Los Angeles, and um, we'll 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 trap them and then we have we work with vets veterinarians and they will they will fix the animal so that they can't then reproduce and they'll give them basic vet care that way we keep the population of feral cats down to a minimum mm -hmm. and if there are any cats that we can then foster or adopt out we'll try to do that as well so that they get homes uh, because they're, you know, living in Los Angeles, there's so many ways these animals can live a really, you know, poor quality of life. I mean, they're eating out of dumpsters. Uh, they might be able to eat a rat, but maybe the rat is also eating rat poison. And so they're getting poisoned or co we have coyotes. So the coyotes will, will uh, kill the cats. And it's just pretty much... Um, a really challenging thing for these cats, you know, to, to go through. So uh, we feel like we're doing the best that we can because these, you know, these animals have been domesticated. And so we're, we're doing what we can to keep the populations a lot lower and to create an awareness through what we do so that more people take better care of their pets and so that's pretty much the goal. And we, and we also do have people that will foster the, the cats, but there's, there's still not enough people to like go around to, to handle the amount of cats that we deal with. So uh, doing the, the TNR that we do seems to be the best way to, to keep, you know, that feral population low. And then, and then once they're back out there, there there's usually feeders and I'm, I'm also a feeder you know, a person who um, I'll bring food to a few different cat colonies on a daily basis. And so, you know, I'm making sure they're, they're able to, to eat that instead of, you know, going after the possible rat that's been eating rat poisoning from the building and, um, and then, you know, kind of having a slow agonizing death or something like that. So yeah, it's, uh, we we collectively think that this is the better way of of handling it because also if if they get picked up by the city they usually euthanize the cats within a day or two if they don't get adopted out and most of them won't get adopted out so it's kind of a grim situation no matter which way you look at it and we feel like we're doing the best thing that we can collectively for the cats great job such a great job no oh, thank you <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Um, what do you think, um, uh, due to the quarantine situation, will online shows be more uh, popular uh, than uh, live uh, performances in the future? Um, I don't, I mean, it's really hard to tell, to be honest. Uh, I think that people will miss the live experience and, and I constantly hear about people wanting to go and connect because I think part of it too is it, humans are social creatures. We want to be amongst each other and enjoy an experience together. And it's hard to do that if you're just sitting in your bed watching a show on, 
your computer. I mean, th there is a benefit to that. I mean, I don't always want to like get dressed up and then go out and make it a big production. And so I can understand that too. I can understand that people are like, oh, wow, all I have to do is just turn on my, you know, computer and I can watch this band perform. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe that will be the way that people start to enjoy shows. I don't know. But me on a personal level, I would be really upset. I would, I prefer going out um, and watching a band that way. Uh, there's nothing that beats that live experience. Hmm. So interesting do you have like an alter ego on stage or not on stage I, I suppose i do depending on the band um to be honest because certain bands are a bit more theatrical mm -hmm. so uh and then some bands are less theatrical some bands are more down to earth and it's all about just the music and the energy that we're bringing and it's not so much about what it is that the band is wearing or what they look like uh but not but i don't think i have an alter ego in the sense of like you know a band like ghost or kiss or or any of these or guar or something like that um so but it, but it but it all depends on the group that i play with i play with such diverse uh musicians mm -hmm. that oh. I, i i have to be a bit of a chameleon uh mm -hmm. being a drummer so i see the question yeah. who is most theatrical What band is the most theatrical? I mean, well, of the ones that I named, I would say Guar or or Ghost or oh. I mean, actually, all of those bands are quite theatrical. I think King Diamond, Merciful Fate. I think the yeah. band about your bands, who is the most theatrical from the project you partake? Uh, oh, I think um, mm -hmm. that's a tough one too because I would say equally <laughs> IMX or Cyclone Nine possibly. Definitely those two bands are very theatrical, but even Scold is quite theatrical too. Um, and they all have a similar aesthetic. Although, although I'll, I'll have to say that with IMX, I can see Chris um, constantly evolving with even the look of all of us. Like we, I mean, I, I really don't know what direction we'll go for the next record. I mean, we might, Uh, do something different with our look. But I mean, if you look historically at the band before I joined, they didn't have as dark of an, an aesthetic. Uh, you know, it was a lot more colorful. I mean, it still had a, a darkness and a broodingness to the music. There was, there was always a bit of that going on. Um, but it was a bit more, th there was a lot of color as well uh, to Chris's look, you know, and he had a lot more like glitter and, Mm -hmm. and just sort of like yeah. you know kind of a more of a flamboyant look to, to to him and the rest of the band whereas uh during my time it definitely went a bit darker with the look but i don't know that he would necessarily continue with that i mean i know he certainly enjoyed uh you know the the few albums that i've been involved with where we've toured and we've kind of had a similar look going um but uh Yeah, it's, I mean, a lot can happen in a year or two. So, I mean, he might, he might want to go in a different direction. And, you know, I'm kind of used to being able to, to turn right a little bit or turn left and be, you know, that's, I mean, that's kind of the fun thing. It's in, in a way, I feel like an actor in that sense. And a lot of times an actor, you know, just gets into the role and can really immerse themselves in there. And that, that becomes a lot of fun. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how many tattoos do you have? How many what? Tattoos. Tattoos? Oh. Uh, just uh, no, no other tattoos. No secret tattoos or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not opposed to having more tattoos. I thought about doing a back piece, possibly. Um, but I don't have a design in mind yet. I would just, I think that that might look really cool. But uh, when, it, when it comes to tattoos, I tend to like larger pieces, you know, just something that all makes sense together. I'm more interested in that than having like a bunch of individual tattoos. So I want, I guess, each limb to tell a story of some sort. So whatever would be on my back would tell a story. I, th I, I thought about doing something that involved 
animal rights or veganism, uh, but, you know, depicted in some sort of beautiful artwork. We have also a big uh, tattoo project. <laughs> so, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. What's we that? We want to offer you also to take part maybe someday uh, when you will have a little time. Yeah, special artists and tattoos. And we have started that four years ago. It's more like more German project and we are a part of it. So. Uh, oh, cool. If you are... So, so what... Uh, is is it where artists describe the tattoos that they have or is that what it is yeah. like 10 okay. uh, questions um, about your tattoos and stories behind them and uh, pictures yeah okay yeah that's cool yeah i would definitely uh i would definitely uh partake in that cool yeah, thank you <laughs> yeah just let me know oh. so thank you um, yeah yeah thank you um, well, uh, I think it's time for a blitz. Um, for what? Blitz, uh, this or that. We prepared oh, okay. these questions. And <laughs> so let's start. Okay, gotcha. Uh, you can say just the one variant or you can comment also um, your opinion. So first one, coffee tea or tea? Coffee. Uh, <laughs> Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. <laughs> Twitter or Instagram? Instagram. Hmm. Morning or evening? Uh, hmm, that's a tough one. Lately, it's been more evening, so I'll be an evening person. Uh, broccoli or cauliflower? <laughs> broccoli. Uh, karaoke or rave party? Karaoke. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not into <laughs> raves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, choose uh, the last evil. Okay, uh, Marvel or DC? Uh, DC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, comfort or risk? Risk. To understand everything or to be healthy forever? Hmm. Ignorance is bliss, so health. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. That, that's a tough one. Uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess health because then, you know, because I think that it's more, ex uh, it's, to me, it's, it's better to make connections with people, you know, heart to heart connections uh, but I, but the the later is also very important too. I mean, to to have knowledge is is okay. very important too. So yeah, okay, that's a tough one. But uh, but I think connecting is even more important than that. I'd have I'd rather have less uh, knowledge and and connect and and therefore have health and longevity. <laughs> well, and the last one in this game to find a book that contains truth only truth about the past or to find this book that contains truth about future hmm maybe the truth about the future that way you know i would be more informed as far as what i would do hmm. and how i would how i would navigate my life <laughs> You know, people say that if you always, uh, if you think about the past often, it means that you usually feel uh, like embarrassed or shame. But if you think about future, usually you're anxious. So, <laughs> that yeah, one... I mean, it's good to look at a little bit of both, in my opinion, but not to dwell on them constantly. I've found that to be, you know, if, if you can live in the present, that's actually the ideal thing to do. You should really do as much as you can to enjoy the moment right now, no matter what it is. Even if, you know, we can't be doing what we want to do, uh, enjoy what you can about the, the moment in and of itself. So, yeah. Oh, people who are worried about uh, connection and your connection is crap, these will be saved. So uh, you can watch it a bit later when... You will find a better place uh, to watch it, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All for us. <laughs> All for you. Excellent. <laughs> um, 
Uh, well, um, also, it's like the finish, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, we also wanted to Thank ask you. who are the other guys in uh, the band, IMX. Uh, are they fine? Well, Chris, you said he's isolated. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mean uh, with their health? Is everyone okay health-wise? Yeah. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, um, I, I talk to Sammy a lot, so she's doing well, uh, and she's been working with Kat Von D a lot lately, and she works on her own stuff, and, uh, yeah, Chris and Janine are doing well. I talk to them on occasion, uh, but yeah, I mean, as the last I checked, they're doing fine. I mean, again, like, uh, you know, Chris... Chris chooses to be a bit more isolated in general. So, I mean, he'll, he, you know, he, he kind of wants to focus usually on his music like that. So, yeah, which is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> we were just thinking it will be also to, um, a good idea to reach out uh, for Sammy and if she agrees to communicate with her also. <laughs> That's our small plan. Oh, you, you want her, you want to do an interview with Sammy? Yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And I'll talk to her. I'll, 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 I'll recommend it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I liked our game this or that. Beer or tequila? <laughs> oh, beer, absolutely. Insta yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't, I can't handle hard. I mean, I'll drink hard liquor once in a while, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't handle it too well. I don't handle beer too well, to be perfectly honest. I, I, I don't drink near nearly as much as i i might have in my late 20s you know kind of around that time period i think i i was drinking a lot more but i yeah i don't really do that so much anymore <laughs> <laughs> i'll still drink just not as you know i try not to do it often so <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's that uh, responsible oh. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's a physical job playing the drums and you know, it's hard to do if you're hungover. <laughs> oh, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, and for participation, we were waiting for you and really glad that you agreed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Thank and you. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. Oh, I see one more uh, question oh, yeah. that I saw several times. Uh, do you like Tool and why? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Do I like Tool and why? I really appreciate Tool. Um, I can't say that I own a lot of the records. I had I had Undertow back in the day, and uh, but and I've seen Tool live. I actually saw them on the side stage of a festival when they were first starting out, and that was incredible. They definitely uh, really blew a lot of us away. Um, this was, you know, my dad took me to the show, so this must have been like in nineteen. I was a, I was a young young kid at that point. I was it, so this was like 1993 maybe or something like that or 92. It was a long time ago. I was very young. Uh so I've I think Tools fantastic. Uh but but I will say that I don't listen to as much progressive rock and it's not because I don't like it. It's just that you have to be in a very certain mood I feel like to really enjoy it and I tend to like certain songs that are a bit more instantaneous i don't know maybe i'm simple-minded in that way but i i just i enjoy simple just simple songs uh and so when i'm going to listen to something a bit more deep and introspective such as a band like tool uh it, it happens less often but there are moments when i'm very much into that or like a progressive rock band so kind of like if i'm watching a film uh, you know, I really enjoy, for instance, uh, Stanley Kubrick or David Lynch, but you have to be in a very specific mood to go and watch one of those films. If I need to just throw on some sort of entertainment just to kind of rest my mind, I'm more likely to watch like a movie that has Will Ferrell in it or something like that, <laughs> you know, a, like a light comedy. Oh, well, I'm simple. I'm a drummer. I'm a caveman. I don't know. <laughs> no, not true. Not... <laughs> well, now for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for a nice chat. It was such a pleasure. Um, Absolutely. Hope... Thank you. Hopefully I see you in Kiev again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be happy to. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So again, thank you very much, and who uh, for people who watched it, who posted questions, uh, for being active. Um, mm -hmm. Stay tuned, and thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye. All right, take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. bye.